this presentation, we're going to look at an approach to integrating electronic ART systems in Namibia using the OpenHIE architecture. The aim is to improve the quality of care received by the patient, as well as to reduce the reporting burden and increase the accuracy and timeliness of um, reporting on the effectivity of these systems. Again, a little bit of context. In Namibia, there are several electronic systems deployed at a, the clinic level um, related to ART services. One is the EPMS, or Electronic Patient Monitoring System. Another is EDT, the Electronic Dispensary Tool. Um, so one of the, the questions that we have is, how do we ensure that when a client is enrolled um, in a care regimen via the EPMS system um, that specifies the medications that they need to take, that that same client is actually um, receiving the medicines as tracked in the EDT tool. Um, so there's some immediate um, needs to do this. And one of the ways that we're going to accomplish this is using a, a SQL server that's deployed at the clinic level. Um, this is going to handle synchronization of the client and the clinical information between the two systems. Um, now, there are other point of care systems that are operating at the clinical level. For example, the HIV testing and counseling system, HTC. So if we wanted to integrate with those uh, systems as well, we'd have to add in some new functionality to the SQL Server integration, um, which can be done, um, but it's some more functionality and some more complexi complexity. But this is, right now, just a single site. We also have multiple sites operating at multiple districts, and, and it's quite common for clients to um, traverse multiple sites, for example, through migratory labor or just uh, based out of convenience um, as to which site is closest. So we do need to integrate this data across multiple sites. So with more sites, we would each have their own SQL server, their own integration, and now we need to think about how we can integrate across these multiple sites. Well, we want to do this in a way that reduces complexity um, as well as as new systems um, are connected we can reduce the amount of um, uh, software development and um, implementation burden to add new systems to this. So while the SQL Server it can satisfy some immediate concerns and, and needs, we need to look at something that is uh, a little broader approach that can, uh, can handle a more an expanding electronic information system. So, figure out how to do this, let's look a little more closely at the type of data that's being synchronized in the SQL Server application. One is patient demographic information, and the other is patient clinical information. We're going to focus first on the patient demographic information. Now, um, with the patient demographic information, we will need to ensure that we can cross-reference clients in all point-of-care systems, whether they're operating within a single clinic um, or across multiple clinics. The uh, one approach to doing this is to have a central client registry. So this is a common store of the clinical information, um, uh, the, the patient demographic information that's used across multiple systems. In this case, the EPMS and EDT systems would send client demographics information to the client registry. The client registry has built-in statistical matching um, to help identify duplicate information um, so that we can resolve when a, a patient is a duplicate in the EPMS and EDT systems. And then we can synchronize uh, the data that is in the client registry um, to back to the EPMS and EDT systems. So if a patient is enrolled in the EPMS system, the data goes into the client registry and synchronized. Uh, it's deduplicated and um, sent back down to the EDT systems. Now this can happen either um, in a connected online uh, facility or the data can be transferred via USB stick if we're working in a um, disconnected system. Um, this is mostly effective uh, when the there is some time between the visit to the EPMS and the EDT systems so that there is time for that data to um, synchronize. When uh, 
in some cases when the 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 EPMS system, the EDT systems are in the same clinic and a patient is going from the same day um, um, to to visits where their clinical information is captured in the EPMS and EDT systems, we will rely on the, the SQL server that we'd already discussed to ensure the, the synchronization of the data. In any case, um, once we have the client registry, we can start linking up other systems um, such as the HTT system um, to synchronize the the clinical or the the patient demographic data. Now we want to do this in an effective way um, and not rely on using every single system's API. Um, instead, we'll take a standards-based approach. We'll be relying on the HL7 Fire standards for the um, synchronization up and down. Um, from the point of care systems to the client registry. By doing this, whenever a new system such as HTC comes on board to this architecture, um, they don't have to be concerned with what is the APIs or the, the way to exchange data with the EPMS or ETT systems. They have an open standard um, supported by the client registry that they um, can utilize for the data exchange. Now, as we have multiple systems interacting with the client registry, we want to ensure that there is some security um, to do that. This is where we introduce the interoperability layer. The interoperability layer will intercept all the inbound messages um, from the client registry to ensure that the point of care systems are authorized to either create or records on or query the client registry. Um, this will ensure that that the privacy of the clients in the, the client registry. Uh, what the interoperability layer also does is to create an audit log of all the transactions coming in from the point of care systems so that we can ensure um, if there is a, a suspected breach of privacy, we can go back to the audit log and, and review um, what's going on. The third thing that the interoperability layer does is it handles the synchronization um, so it acts as a clock for synchronizing between the various um, point of care uh, systems with the client registry. Once we have all of these uh, these two pieces, the interoperability and the client registry, we've got our uh, the start of our OpenHIE architecture for the ART data warehouse. Okay, we can add multiple sites so multiple EPMS EDT systems, HTC, the, and now the, the implementation cost is, is relatively small. It's linear rather than um, factorial. Um, it makes relatively little difference how many sites that we add. Um, they all will use the same standards for the data exchange. Next, we get into the clinical information. Um, for this, we'll we're going to add an ART data warehouse that's going to capture just the clinical information about the, the clients. This could include things such as the viral load, uh, referrals, care plan, the ART course of treatment, the medications dispensed, medications taken, um, as well as you know, basic um, information about the client, such as the height and weight. Now, all of these point of care systems can either produce or utilize that information, um, and we, and this is where the ART data warehouse comes in. So the first thing that we need to do is to figure out how we represent this clinical information. Luckily for us, the same fire uh, standard that we were utilizing before for the clinic, the client demographics, can also be used to represent the clinical information um, that we're capturing on the client. So now we can look at a, um, a particular uh, message that is being sent from the EPMS system. So let's say a course of treatment was specified by the EPMS system that gets wrapped into a, an electronic message at the EPMS system, and it gets sent up to the ART data warehouse. But before it gets to the ART data warehouse, it's intercepted by the interoperability layer. Here, we can validate that the correct patient is referenced. So we can ensure that the data quality from the EPMS system by 
referencing the uh, the client registry to ensure that the the patient that is in that message a reference in the message is actually there if it's not then we can um, kick the air the message back down to the epms system and give it time to correct the the client information that it has once we validated that the information is correct we can continue to send this message um, all the way up to the ART data warehouse. So um, this same pattern can be followed by the EDT and HTT systems where they generate clinical information, send it through the interoperability layer, validate it, and end up landing in the ART data warehouse. Now once we have that data in the AT, ART data warehouse, the we can start asking questions. We can query that ART data warehouse. So the EPMS system, for example, can say, did the client receive their meds? It can use, again, the FHIR standards to query the ART data warehouse um, using the referenced client and look at the, the medications that they've taken. Um, this way, we can ensure that the, the client has um, is proceeding along with their, their care treatment plan. The HTT system can also ask the same question of the ART data warehouse. You notice that now it can also use the FHIR standards. Um, we're not having to do multiple um, API and um, data integration standards for the, the various systems. We're going to the central repository, which reduces our, our deployment costs significantly. Um, and again, this will work not just in a single site, but across multiple um, um, sites, because all of the data, the clinical data that's being collected is going into the ART data warehouse. Now, once we have the ART data warehouse, we can look utilize it not just for the use of the point of care applications, but we can look at reporting ART indicators. Um, so there is a DHIS2 system. Um, for the Ministry of Health, as well as for um, DATUM, which we can look at um, the ART data warehouse. We can aggregate the clinical information and report used to DHIS2 using the ADX message based on the, the indicators required by the MOH um, and the DATUM system, for, or in PEPBAR's DATUM system. We don't have to go back to the EPMS, EDT, and HTT systems to generate these indicators, which um, is really going to reduce the amount of time and effort required to report. If we have a, a message in the EPMS system, um, let's look again a little closer what can happen when it goes into the interoperability layer. In that clinical message, there's also reference to the facility at, or the site at which the that clinical information was uh, collected, as well as a link to the health worker that gave that clinical or captured that clinical information. It'd be great if we could also validate it, that. For this, there's something called the interlinked registry, um, which uses the CSD standard to pull health worker data from the um, faith-based um, HR systems that are in Namibia. That's currently um, working. Hopefully we'll also be able to get the human capital management system which has the public sector um, health workers in there. Uh, if we can pull the the minimum data set of health workers and this is WHO's minimum data set um, of health workers into the interlinked registry we can begin to validate the health worker um, that are in uh, referenced in these clinical messages. Uh, thereby improving the quality of the, the data being reported. Um, if we al uh, also have the master facility list for Namibia determined, that information um, um, will be represented in DHIS2. At this point, we can already, with a click of a button, pull the facility information from DHIS2 into the interlinked registry. So now we have a way to validate both the health worker and the health facility um, at which that clinical content was captured. 
the next thing that we can do is we can validate disease codes, referral codes, and other types of terminologies that are referenced in the, the clinical message. Um, so if you're thinking, for example, of the ICD-10 codes, for this, we'll want to set up a terminology service um, as a central repository of um, an authority for the, the clinical codes that we're using. With the terminology service, we'll again be able to validate um, that clinical message that's coming in, thereby improving the data quality. Now we look at sort of the, the ends of the healthcare systems. We have the health worker themselves, as well as the client, and we should look figure out how um, they actually fit into all of this. Um, and, and so one way is using the mHero system, which as well as the uh, mNut. So mNut is um, named after Emma Nutt, the first uh, female switchboard operator. What these two systems provide is a two-way um, uh, communication platform um, from with health workers by for the Ministry of Health as well as the Health Information Exchange, um, and that's provided by mHero. This can either um, be by SMS or um, other platforms um, uh, that be, can be used for communication and data collection. For example, uh, the ComCare mode tech suite is in progress into integrating with the mHero platform. mNUT is used um, to do one-way communications um, to both the client and the healthcare worker. Uh, this is more for care reminders um, as well as public health uh, alerting events. So now, um, if we think of, in terms of the referral use case, um, we can do several things. Um, we can use mHero to, um, as the two-way communication platform for um, rural healthcare workers or to report um, uh, refer or create a referral for a, a client. Um, we can also use the mHero platform to validate that a client was actually seen in a clinic, um, especially for the clinics that are offline or, or in more rural areas. We can utilize the mNUT to um, re do patient re reminders so a client can get a, a message saying, oh, please go see, uh, please go to this facility um, to ensure that you receive your services. Um, send a reminder if a client has missed the services. It can also send a, a message to the healthcare worker to indicate that um, they have a client that they should follow up with because they have not received their, uh, they did not show up to an expected appointment. So with all these uh, various pieces together, we have our OpenHIE architecture with a high promise for um, integrating multiple systems um, and to improve the clinical care and clinical outcomes um, for ART services. And, and one final note, the ART data warehouse here, if you look at the OpenHIE architecture diagrams, that would play the role of, of the shared health record. Um, we're just looking at um, the ART use cases rather than the full um, gamut of clinical information that could be potentially um, stored in the, the data warehouse. Thank you.